Hello, and welcome to week five. I noticed I have almost everybody's shared portfolios handed in, and I super appreciate that. I will be giving you feedback on that this week, for sure. Um, it's been kind of crazy in my world, and I'm getting the impression it is in yours as well. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look at week five. It is the beginning of our work on our people skills portfolio. And I think I have streamlined things a little bit. Um, I'm hoping it makes life easier for you and for me. And I think it'd be good. Have a share screen. There we go. Okay, here we are, week five, February 7 to, to 11, as always. Anything that is due would be due by the Sunday at midnight. This week is all about emotional intelligence. Now, you may have heard of it before. Maybe yes, maybe no. So let's have a little look at what that involves. So hmm. this slideshow part. So this says what to expect this week. It's actually what you can expect for the next four weeks. This week is all about emotional intelligence. And next week, we will look at dysfunctional to a cohesive team. Then you have reading week. Then we will have how to deal with conflict and the empowerment dynamic. I think some of these pieces can potentially be the most important pieces to learn because oftentimes these skills are learned the hard way, but not very often explicitly taught. So that's what we're going to do. So emotional intelligence is different than IQ. And so this will, through this PowerPoint, you'll be able to see some of the differences. So the intelligent one is all about having the rational mind thoughts. This is the one you've heard about probably your entire life. Now, emotional intelligence has to do with the emotional part of your mind and how you deal with feelings, intuition, heart, that gut feeling that you get the one that you should always listen to, like that. So there's, they're both valuable. There's not one that's necessarily better than another. Usually if you've got, look at both of them, then you're getting a decent quality of level of success. Typically a high IQ, if it's not with a high, also high emotional intelligence, people will rate their lives as 20% successful. Whereas people with even average or lower IQ, but high emotional IQ, 80%. If you're high in both, you're doing great. Okay, I don't know why those questions are there. <laughs> so, the emotions are the building blocks. This is, we connect socially and that's primarily emotions. We've got our we feel things first, we think second, act third. So something like this, if you see somebody crying, that's what your mission, your immediate response is the feeling. Then you have the thinking, then we do the action. So there's three parts to being emotionally aware. So this one's fairly long. I'm not gonna break it down chunk by chunk, but as you can see, there's not a lot of writing on each one. And when you're looking at other pieces this week, you might find this to be helpful. Let's get out of that. Now this one should be different, I think, when I downloaded it, but maybe not. Well, fine. Oh, there we go. The global EI test. Well, you'll be doing the global EI test. It's an online test, similar to the ones you've done before. And it measures your emotional intelligence in four areas, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. This slideshow is all about that global EI test. It is not nearly as long as the other slideshow. So two things mainly for this week. So there's this overall kind of slideshow that is explaining the difference between emotional intelligence versus IQ. This link shows 15, gives you a little bit more background about emotional intelligence. Each of these is a link to a TED talk that deals with emotional intelligence. 
So your first assignment of the week is to be involved in a group discussion. Choose any two of those 15. Doesn't matter to me which ones you choose at all. Just choose two, give us the title and a summary. So you choose one, give the title and a small summary of what were the main points of that presentation. Another title. Ideally, you would include the guest speaker, the speaker's name, and then do the paragraph below that and respond to at least two other people's posts. So here's the, what the discussion forum rubric will look like. And it is probably a great idea to review this. Proficient is five, because all of us want to be proficient. That's the only number we want on this. So for your critical analysis, you're showing that you, your understanding of your readings and outside references, in which case, for this particular one, those write-ups about each of those presentations that's part of your critical analysis that would just writing those posts would be a three having those posts and relating them to previous experience or another source of um, information that's also very very good and this is where we move from a three to a five could be prior coursework, could be work experience. Yeah. Participation in the learning community. That's your first post, plus at least two other responding posts. Again, we want to do more than just say, oh, good idea, or that sounds interesting. We need a little bit more than that. You could discuss, uh, relate what they said to what you saw. You could ask them further questions to keep the conversation going forward. Maybe you disagree with something, disagree with tact and diplomacy. I think the etiquette is completely a Yoda situation. You are either being respectful, polite, you're showing interest and sensitivity, or you're not. So it's either a five or a one, maybe a zero. Both of those can be affected by the, num the amount of responding posts. The final piece on the online discussion rubric is the timeliness factor. You want to have your first post no later than Wednesday. Don't do all your posting in one day. Do some have your post on Wednesday or at least respond to some of it, somebody else's on Wednesday, and then revisit that later on in the week maybe Friday, Saturday, but we need to start by Wednesday because you want to have a discussion. So somebody's got to have something written before you can have a discussion. So that part I've got posted for today. Information about the intelligence, watch a couple of videos, participate in the discussion or get started on that. But the second part, this is the slideshow that is just about the global EI test. This is the link to said global EI test. I have found it takes a little while to load. So if it does that to you, don't panic. Something I've also found is sometimes I go out of it and then I try to open it again and then it says it's okay. Or sure, it'll make a liar out of me right now. Now, the other thing, here's the assignment that goes with it. Ah, in my version of it, I have the link on there. I will fix this one so it also has the link on there. But essentially you do the self-assessment and answer these four questions in about 250 words. So that's, it's a fairly good chunk, a couple of paragraphs. And explain how they apply to you. Maybe any relevant personal examples of whether you agree, disagree, why or why not? And that, my friends, is the whole point of week five. Week six, like I said, is going to be with going, working with a dysfunctional team and working toward a more cohesive team. Since most of you are athletes, I think you're going to have a lot of personal experience with that. And work, teamwork is very much like a working environment. So wherever it says workplace, you can also substitute team. Then we will have reading week. 
So only two more weeks to reading week. Like I said, I will be giving you feedback on your personal portfolios this week, for sure. It's been a crazy week. Well, it's been a crazy few weeks, but I will get that to you right away. And then I think, I think our next four weeks, because the next week, four weeks of school time, not counting reading week, are all about the people skills portfolio. Each week is going to have a major topic. We will have a quiz probably week nine, because we'll do week five, week six. Reading week is week seven. Then we'll do week eight, week nine. So in week nine, there will be a quiz. There's one more discussion piece that will be in here. And each week has one assignment instead of three, four, or five. We're, we're figuring it out together. We will get there. <laughs> um, aside from that, as always, hop on to the class time. If you have any questions or you just want to share how stressful your week's going, now I'll tell you how my mine is going. Whatever works for you. And I hope all is well with you. And I will see you or chat with you or email with you, whatever we need to do. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to stop sharing. And yeah, <laughs> bye for now. <laughs>